one of the things that we know about King Tut was that he had a elongated head that looks something like this. And I'm going to show you an actual um, skull of the actual King Tut and you'll see that this was in fact what his head looked like. Now so-called scholars have made some uh, embarrassingly stupid remarks in the past about the shape of King Tut's head. There are a lot of uh, artifacts that de uh, depict his head shaped like this and they would suggest that somehow that is representative of spirituality or something like that. But the fact of the matter is that's actually what his head looked like and I'm going to show you why. And the shape of his head and many others within the Egyptian kingdom also gives greater evidence as to who the Egyptians actually were and are. And just for comic relief, I'm going to show you some of the stupidity and nonsense that's out there. Here's a, uh, another image. Let's read what it says. This plate called the Lalagoff plate is a 12,000 year old stone dish found in Nepal. It clearly shows a disc shaped UFO. There's also a figure on the disc uh, looking remarkably similar to a girl. Sorry, wrong caption. This is a photo of Nefertiti, the goddess who lived in ancient Egypt. Notice this goddess's head. Her skull is extremely elongated. This would mean her brain would be much larger than a normal human's. Are you sure about that? This would mean that her brain is much larger than a normal human's. Okay, let's see if you maintain that position once I show you the origin of this. First of all, let's look at this page. Do aliens exist? Proof of alien life. So basically they're saying that the shape of this head would suggest that uh, she and the other Egyptians who had a head shape like that were actually aliens. That's basically what they're saying. So what I'm going to do next is show you some other Egyptians who uh, depicted this elongated head. This is a image of Princess Armana who also had the same elongated head. Here we have an image of Nefertiti with the elongated head. And there we have another elongated head here, Princess Armana. And here, taken from the Egyptian tombs, we have an image of Smenka and Meritaten. This is found in the uh, Stocklich Museum in Berlin. Look at the elongated head. Here's another image of Tutankhamun, and uh, his elongated head is the reason that he has this headdress that is as large as it is. Here's a bust of the young Tutankhamun with his elongated head again. Now this is a headdress. Uh, obviously a normal head would be shaped about like this. So his head goes all the way to the back. That would be the shape of his head. Here we have another image with the elongated head and the children also have the elongated heads. That's Tutankhamun, by the way. Here we have Tutankhamun again. It's not as obvious, but there you have his elongated head. And there it is again. Underneath all of this is the elongated head. Here we have the actual Tutankhamun's mummified head showing the elongation. And there it is again. This is the actual mummy. Now that we've established that many of the Egyptians have this elongated head, let's take a look at some, some more elongated heads and what culture this may be indigenous to. There's an elongated head. There is another elongated head. And here is another. Here is another elongated head. The mother also has an elongated head, as does this woman here. Now, these are not coincidences. So, the daughters, notice the head on the daughters, and it's the elongated head. Well, many Europeans said that that elongated head was a, a deformity. But when we look at the sister from Zaire, you see, she has the same shape in her head. It goes back to the daughters of Akhenaten. So here we got Akhenaten's daughter. And so we got this queen over here from the Mash B2 tribe out of Central Africa. Look it up. And you see it right there. And you see the rap that is rap? I don't know if it's... Can you see the queen? This is Akhenaten. This is uh, Tutankhamun.